Throughout our history, 150 plus years marked by teaching, research, and engagement, we have been driven by a purpose greater than ourselves. Our purpose, our reason for being, is to serve. To serve the people of Indiana and beyond. Hardworking men and women from big cities, small towns and rural communities, different circumstances, and promising futures. We trace our worthy charge to a defining moment in our country's history, July 2nd, 1862. Among the darkest days of the Civil War, President Lincoln signed a bill to preserve the industrial spirit of a divided union. The Morrill Act gives over one million acres of federal land to endow at least one university in every state. Born from an idea so uniquely American, these universities are not meant to be exclusive to the wealthy or elite. They are for all. They are to teach applied subjects like agriculture and the mechanic arts, and they are to share their knowledge far beyond campus borders. Upon our founding in 1869, Purdue University represents a new era in education for all. Our first graduate, John Bradford Harper, puts it into these words. Who dares to place a limit on the human intellect? Who dares to say when the search for truth in this world shall end? For decades to come, Purdue University opens doors to the instigators of progress. Instigators of discoveries, patents, companies, life-saving drugs, works of art, world food, and Nobel prizes. The list goes on and on and on. Like our commitment to those we serve, a community with educational needs that grows and changes over time. We open regional campuses, freeze tuition, take instruction online, and reinvent high school. We continue to reimagine accessible education for the 21st century, and our service is no longer contained within red brick exteriors. Why? Because the people, our nation, still need us, today as they did in 1862. And we can do more. We can serve more. 40 million Americans have some college credit and valuable life experience, but no degree. First-generation students, working adults, active military, and veterans. Many share the same dreams and drive that define Purdue. For them, West Lafayette is not the answer today. They need something else, something they can trust and be proud of. For them, our answer is new yet ever true. Purdue Global. To them and to all we serve in West Lafayette and around the globe, we offer an invitation, a chance, an opportunity to dream big again and take the small steps that will move us all forward. Because if not us, who? We are Purdue and Purdue Global, where again and again and again, persistence pays off. Chancellor Dooley, the candidates have been assembled. Welcome to everybody. I'm Dr. Frank Dooley, Chancellor of Purdue University Global. Whether you're with us here in rainy Anaheim or participating from home, let me be the first to welcome you today to our 16th com commencement ceremony. And I do have one caveat. With this crazy weather, we have a supply chain problem. Our programs did not arrive on time. So sitting on your seats or up here is a QR code that you can scan to get the formal program that's going to give you a digital one. All right. 
Would everybody please stand for the presentation of the colors, the national anthem, and then the retiring of the colors. Please be seated and join me in recognizing and thanking the Tustin American Legion Post 227 Color Guard. You make us proud. I'd also like to thank Eileen Kabali, who joins us from Las Vegas, Nevada, to share her beautiful voice. I, yes, Eileen. Later on, she's going to be back on stage as she's graduating today with a Master's of Science in Instructional Design and Technology. Also last night, she was her amazing speaker at the Military Appreciation Dinner. Eileen, what an incredible family you have, and thank you for sharing your talents with us today. Thank you. And you know, just before we came in, you saw, oh, I see your dad. Hi. <laughs> He's a Navy vet, and it's a very proud family. We're glad that you're with us as well. You know, we have a lot to celebrate today, right? And, and it, I'm just delighted that those of you here made it. Um, this is going to be a great day, and, and, and let's just suck it in. The, 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 the video you saw at the beginning, right? Did that not hit you right here? Did that not make you proud? And, and we're incredibly proud of you, and that's what this is all about today. So, the way we're going to start this, I'm going to take a moment, introduce to you the dedicated members of our university administration, the faculty, and our graduation speaker who, who is with us today. So, to those on the stage, please stand when I announce your name, and then for those in the audience, let's let them all stand, and then we'll give one round of applause, okay? Dr. Paul Bott, Board of Trustees. Dr. John Harbour, Provost. 
Dr. Carolyn Nordstrom, Chief Administrative Officer. Dr. Tiffany Townsend, Vice President of Organizational Culture and Chief Diversity Officer. Jennifer Lassiter, Vice President, Center for Career Advancement. Um, they're all over here for some reason. Michael Lorenz, Vice President of Strategy and Academic Operations and Registrar. Now, we have a big highlight this weekend. It is the 25th anniversary of our law school, and here from Concord Law School is Dean and Vice President Martin Pritkin, Associate Dean of First Year Programs and Professor Steve Bracci, Associate Dean of Academic Affairs and Professor Don, Dr. Sean Jamieson, Associate Dean of Experiential Learning and Professor Kelly Mauerman, Assistant Dean of Students, Dr. Laraz Moody, Director of Bar Support and Professor Quentin Huff, Professor James Dodge, Professor Scott Johnson, Professor Latifa Mohammed, Professor Lori Tripoli, and Professor Chandrea Williams. From the School of Nursing, Dean and Vice President Dr. Melissa Birdie and Professor Racella Austin. From the School of General Education, Dean and Vice President Dr. Jody DeCourt, former Faculty Senate President and our mace bearer, Professor Mark Burlingham, Professor Paige Erickson, Pro Professor Beth Lee, and Professor January Pearson. From the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences and the School of Aviation, that's not right, is it? Professor Tuana Evans and Professor Richard Nybush. And finally, our keynote speaker, Concord Law alumnus Dolan Williams. Thank you all for joining us today. Let's give them a round. You, you may be seated. All right. Now, Purdue University's new president, Dr. Meng Chang, would like to share some of his sentiments with you. So we're going to watch another video. Dr. Chang. Warm congratulations to all of you as you are about to turn from students to alumni of Purdue Global. Commencement is a time for laughter, hugs, and celebration. Today, we're proud to celebrate your persistence in completing your degrees at Purdue Global while having full-time jobs, taking care of your children and family, or serving our country. Education uplifts people's lives, including my own families. Due to circumstances in life, my father could only start his higher learning in his 50s. He started with associate degree in a community college and then went on to earn his bachelor and master's degree. I was there with his first graduation. That was the proudest moment in my own life as well. Today, there are about 40 million Americans with some college credentials, but not a degree. Under the leadership of Chancellor Dooley, and the entire faculty and staff at Purdue Global, we are determined to provide a high quality solution to that challenge. In addition to celebrating our students and families, today we'll also celebrate the 25th birthday of Concord Law School, the nation's first fully online law school. Now, boiler up, hammer down, congratulations again to all of you, and hail our Purdue. Thank you, Dr. Chang. His father's story is very similar to many of those graduating today. But as the saying goes, the more things change, the more they stay the same. And we've seen plenty of change in higher education. You know, one of them is simply the way that you've all earned your degree, fully online, right? But also, what do we have? Artificial intelligence. Once a thing of the very far off future is now a reality. For all you know, I wrote this speech with ChatGPT. Okay. We're seeing it being used in many ways to build sophisticated equipment for diagnosis and healthcare, self-driving vehicles, and e-commerce to improve the customer experience. We see it in education too. 
Although it's very much still a human influence industry, we're using AI to help improve efficiencies and further personalize learning. The future is here. And I know that some of you are going to work with these technologies. Some will advance the technologies. Others will be using them in your work. In either way, I'm really eager to see how you're going to use it and where, what your future holds. All right. We're very grateful to provide a ceremony that brings us together no matter where we are from around the globe, either virtually or here in Southern California. Graduates, it's quite remarkable. At today's ceremony, you represent 46 states, Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and from places around the world like Bermuda, Canada, Indonesia, St. Kitts and Nevis, and Saipan, which happens to be the largest island in the Northern Marianas Islands. I love that we can remain close through this institution as we recognize your accomplishments today. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb and suggest, you know, you're all amazing in your own right, but you didn't get here on your own. You had plenty of help. Balancing work, school, and life is not easy. You leaned on family, friends, children, co-workers, and others for encouragement and support throughout your journey at Purdue Global. Let's take a moment to thank those in your support system. Let's show them some appreciation. What a great support system you've had during your journey. We're also honored that our Purdue Global student body includes close to 5,000 active duty National Guard and Reserve military members serving around the globe, over 1,400 military family members, and over 2,900 veterans. That's almost 9,300 of our students affiliated with the military. Would each of you in the audience today who is an active service member or a veteran, please stand. Thank you so much for your service. And while I'm at it, let's share a little bit more about what makes your class and alma mater so remarkable. Will the graduates who are attending today as a first generation graduate please rise and remain standing? So you're the students, first in your family to attend college, complete their degree. Would you please stand? Now stay up, don't sit down, keep up, all right? About half of our students are first-gen students, and just so you know, I am one and others on this stage are first-gen students as well. Will the graduates who held a job or were in the service while attending school please also stand and remain standing? If you're already up, raise your hand, your right hand. Yeah, that, this right, yeah. Will the graduates, now you guys keep standing, will the graduates who cared for a child or other dependent while obtaining your degrees please rise, remain standing, and for those of up, if you had one hand up, now put the other one up, if not, put the left hand up. Once again, this is another half of our students, all right? So, so you see who we are. Right? And, and in addition to that, I want you to know that there are over 11,000 graduates from, from Purdue Global this year. You can put your hands down now. What you have done is remarkable. Uh, you completed your education while dealing with everything that life has thrown your way, including these last couple of years, a pandemic. It takes a lot of hard work and dedication to get to where you are today, and you should be incredibly proud. So let's give them a round, and you can sit down.
Now, I have the distinct honor to introduce our commencement speaker, Dolan Williams. Dolan is a Concord Law School alumnus who graduated back in 2015 with his Juris Doctor degree. He came up to us from San Diego today to be with us and share some of his thoughts. So Dolan, please come up. Graduates, family, friends, and the entire Purdue community, welcome. It is an honor and a pleasure to be here. My name is Dolan Williams, and I'm a graduate of Concord Law School at Purdue Global, class of 2015. If this is your first time visiting Southern California, the answer to your question is yes. The traffic is always this bad. And no, nobody knows how to drive. So anyway, here's how it started. When I first decided to further my education back in 2005, the company I was working for was having these massive layoffs that lasted years. But my wife was staying home with our kids, and I was the only earner. At this time, my wife and I had more kids, while the company I was working for shrank by 50%. My personal life was moving in a direction different than my, my professional life, and I knew a job loss would be devastating. So I also knew an education was going to be my ticket to security and prosperity. Originally, I started in a graduate program at Arizona State around the same time my oldest was born. So what I came to realize was getting started was the easy part. Every day I could feel the pressure mounting to do my best at work to survive, but also make sure I get that assignment in by 11.59 p.m. <laughs> so in fact, the day my oldest was born, I had to hand a project to a classmate to turn in for me so I could run to the hospital. So uh, before my program was over, we had two kids, and this photo accurately summarizes how well I handled work, school, and home <laughs> to cross the finish line. So let's just say I barely made it. <laughs> After graduation, I learned no matter my education, my family was counting on me. But I had little control over things like company downsizing. I had trouble sleeping, and my heart broke every time I saw another colleague pack up their desk. I felt so dependent on the decisions of people whom I've never met, and those feelings of helplessness were exhausting. I just knew I was next on the chopping block. And for any of you who have experienced layoffs, especially during the pandemic, this feeling is all too real. I still needed a change if we were going to survive. Like so many of you, we had no plan B. I needed something that, that would help guard against the rocky professional waters, but also allow me to keep my commitment to my family. One day, I was driving down the street with my wife, and I turned to her and said, what if I became a lawyer? Mind you, I didn't know any lawyers at the time, and I didn't come from a family of lawyers, but it didn't matter. She was all about it. So I had to start looking for how I was going to keep my job and get a new degree. So I started looking the way any of us begins a life-changing, meaningful research project. I Googled it. <laughs> Thankfully, Concord Law School pulled up, and I was on the first step of my journey. I told my wife, and she celebrated the idea. After graduation, I worked at a law firm in 2017, and I would listen to music while I was researching. I wasn't a fan of musical theater, but I tried the Hamilton soundtrack on a whim. I instantly fell in love with it, and now I've seen it live four times. And to be honest, I haven't shut up about how much I love it since the first time I saw it on stage. So there is one song that stands out to me. It's called Hurricane. So for those unfamiliar, Alexander Hamilton lived on St. Croix and had this massive hurricane destroy the island. Hamilton wrote this amazing poem about the wreckage and how some rich folks helped get him off the island and get to America to get an education. In the song, Lin-Manuel Miranda says, I wrote my way out. The idea is he used his skills and a little bit of luck to get off the island permanently. But what this said to me was that before he fought for America's independence, Hamilton fought for his own freedom. Believe it or not, you all did the same thing in your own way. Your hurricane could have been a bad boss, it could have been a bankruptcy, it could have been a divorce, or maybe you just wanted to finish what you started. Whatever your reason, you wrote your way out. My hurricane, my hurricane was a combination of struggles I had growing up, believing that I could make something of myself. Like so many people I grew up with, I had a single mom who had some mental health struggles and a father who suffered from the twin demons of drug and alcohol addiction. Ultimately, neither of my parents could survive their hurricanes and they died way too young. How this affected me growing up was that I learned that failure wasn't an option because there was no backup plan. 
As I got older, got married, and had children, I knew if I let the hurricane of my youth consume me, my family would suffer. The life raft for me, like many of you, was an education and a commitment to my growing family. So I started my program here about three weeks before my youngest daughter was born. I thought finishing my first program was tough, but now with four kids, I had a small army that needed me at my best. Every day for years required a daily routine of work, time with family, study, rinse, study, rinse, and repeat. This was all without any guarantee that I would finish while praying I'd survive another round of layoffs. You all know this pattern and this feeling all too well. For students who follow a traditional path to their education, it's hard to adequately explain what it's like when you have so many years left in your program, but also be worried about getting the bills paid. It's, it's hard having to explain that you've got a deadline not only for work, but also one for school, and a deadline to help your kids finish their own presentation for their own class. So just take a moment to consider how impressive and unusual your accomplishment is and take a moment to thank your support system for helping you through, I do every single day. Nevertheless, I understand some of you may be scared despite today's celebration. There may be a promotion, a new job you've had your eye on, the bar exam or the boards. You may just be wondering if the degree was even worth it. I can relate, as I mentioned before, we just had one income and no hope of job security and to fight the belief I was doomed to the same fate as my parents. I had this recurring nightmare of losing everything because of a layoff, and it seemed like the hopes I had as a kid for giving my kids a more comfortable upbringing was just slipping away. Regardless of your circumstance, the point is that I can understand the fear and anxiety that may be filling your mind. But what I can tell you is this. My experiences of staying up late at night wondering whether I could afford to feed my family shaped me for the better. It taught me what I was made of, and it gave me the confidence that if I could live through that, I could live through anything. Just one degree later, I see the fruits of the labor I put in years ago, and I promise that you will too. In closing, the reason Purdue Global chose me to speak is not that I'm some famous person. I haven't written any bestsellers. I don't have my own television show. Purdue Global, they asked me to speak to you because I am you. I know what it's like to try to do your homework at work. I've felt the guilt that comes with not being able to spend as much time with your family as you want. But despite how it started, it was worth it. And I can tell you how it's going now. Now, I can actively support my wife the way that she supported me and strengthen the relationship with my kids. I have the pleasure and honor of running my own law practice and I don't stress about layoffs anymore. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, I don't, I don't worry about long commutes because I get to work out of my own home and I spend time with my family. For the first time in my life, I don't feel so dependent. I feel independent. Success isn't just having a long and impressive list of accomplishments. It is the power to live your life on your own terms. With your degree, this is the power that you all have now. I survived these hurricanes and so did each of you. Just like Alexander Hamilton, you wrote your way out. And now it's time for the next chapter in your story. Thank you and congratulations graduates. Thank you, Dolan. I mean, what an inspiring story to hear from our alum about their careers and accomplishments and experiences. Thank you so much for sharing that today. And now we're going to turn to you, graduates, as we continue our celebration. I want to take a moment to highlight some of your accomplishments. All right. Recently, we launched the Center for Community Engagement and Service Learning. And one part of that center is an award called the Community Engagement and Services Award, or ACES. The ACES Award provides students with an opportunity to be recognized for engaging in volunteer activities in their community. And I'm delighted to highlight two graduates who have achieved platinum level in the ACES program. Gladys O'Quarry was from graduating with a Master's of Science in Psychology degree, and Cash Sutton was graduating with his Bachelor's of Science in Organizational Management. I'd also like to highlight Leah Vinod who achieved bronze level status and graduating today with her Bachelor's of Science in Healthcare Administration. Thank you for dedicating countless hours to your communities.
and to give you some more feeling for who's in the room and their accomplishments, will the doctoral candidates please rise? And that includes the law school grads, your doctoral arts. Just so you know, only 2% of the nation's population have a doctoral degree, so this is indeed quite an accomplishment. Please be seated. Will the master's candidates please rise? So congratulations to these graduates who make up about 9% of our nation's population. And a special congrats to those wearing the white and gold cord, which symbolizes their high GPA in a master's program or doctor of nursing program. Please be seated. Also, the graduates have earned a master's or a doctoral degree wear a hood to signify their incredible achievement. We've highlighted a few of those who are hooded at home by their loved ones. Congratulations to all of our master's and doctoral graduates. And we're also proud to recognize those graduates that have earned high academic honors by achieving a high cumulative GPA in their associates or bachelor's program. Will the graduates who earned cum laude honors please rise, and you're wearing white cords, so those with white cords, please rise. And you can be seated. Will the graduates who earned magna cum laude honors please rise? You're the graduates with a high cumulative GPA of at least 3.8, and you're wearing the silver cords. Yes. Please be seated. And then we have these graduates who have demonstrated exemplary ability and discipline by earning straight A's in all their courses. Our summa cum laude grads, they got the gold cords. Please stand and show them off, all right? <laughs> and you can be seated as well. All right, graduates, today is a day to celebrate you. And, then, and this indeed is really important. We've tried to capture your sentiments because we thought it'd be a meaningful reminder of all that you've accomplished to get to where you are today. You know, oftentimes when, if, this, if you're 22 and graduating, we talk about your future and where you're gonna go. You know what we're gonna talk about? We're gonna talk about today, right? Because today is when you have, have, are taking an important step forward. So. Look at this, and once again, you see people who matter to us. So, so thank you and congratulations on your accomplishments. Now, finally, let's get to the reason why you came for this recognition, all right? So let's get to that. And, and as we do this, I'm going to start by recognizing we have over 500 people who are doing their graduation virtually from around the world. So graduates, if you're at home, Please rise so I can formally recognize your degree. Exercise the authority of the trustees of Purdue University Global, legally vested by the people of the state of Indiana, and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I now confer upon each of you the doctoral, master's, bachelor's, associate, or certificate with all the rights, privileges, duties, and responsibilities of that degree. Congratulations to our virtual graduates. All right, so this is how it works. Graduates will begin inviting you to the stage. As you approach the stage, don't forget to bring that card with your name on it. You'll hand it to the attendant who will let you know when to cross the stage. And then you'll be greeted by your school's administrator or myself. And I now turn it over to Professor William from Concord Law School. Will the candidates from Concord Law School please rise? Chancellor Dooley, these graduates have successfully fulfilled the requirements 
of Concord Law School. And with the approval of the faculty, they are now being presented to you to be formally recognized for their degree. Thank you, Professor Williams. Exercising the authority of the trustees of Purdue University Global, legally vested by the people of the state of Indiana, and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I now confer upon each of you the executive Juris Doctor or the Juris Doctor degree with all of the rights, privileges, duties, and responsibilities of that degree. As evidence of this great achievement, you will now be formally recognized. I invite the marshals to lead the candidates from Concord Law School to the stage. And there are some messages from our Concord Law School faculty and staff who want to share their feelings with you. So let's take a look at that. Congratulations, Concord graduates. If you can make it through this, you can make it through anything. Hi everyone, Professor Scott Johnson from Concord Law School. Welcome to the wonderful world of your graduation. Congratulations on a job well done. Congratulations graduates, you did it. We're so proud of you, Jen. Congratulations graduates, boiler up. The following candidates are graduating from Concord Law School. They're getting a picture taken before they come on stage because of the 25th anniversary, so just patience for a minute. We thought we ought to let you know they didn't get lost. And here they are. David Douglas. Michelle gensmer Cleek, Elizabeth Duncan. Steve Hales, U.S. Navy veteran. Nelson A. Locke, Esquire, U.S. Marine Corps veteran. <laughs> Melissa Luce. <laughs> Jennifer Kim Nguyen. Condretta Presley. <laughs> Patricia Toure, U.S. Marines. <laughs> Stella Wang.
Quantina White. Congratulations, Concord Law graduates. <laughs> Dr. Birdie. Will the candidates from the School of Nursing please rise? Chancellor Dooley, these graduates have successfully fulfilled the requirements of the School of Nursing, and with the approval of the faculty, they are now being presented to you to be formally recognized for their degree. Thank you, Dr. Birdie. Exercise the authority of the trustees of Purdue University Global, legally vested by the people of the state of Indiana, and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I now confer upon each of you the doctoral, master's, bachelor's, associate's, or certificate with all of the rights, privileges, duties, and responsibilities of that degree. And as evidence of this great achievement, you'll now formally be recognized. I invite the marshals to lead all the candidates from the School of Nursing to the stage. And we'll see if they get lost, all right? <laughs> <laughs> and here are some of the folks from the School of Nursing who want to share some of their special messages. So let's take a look. Congratulations, graduates. Congratulations. So very proud of you. You did it. We couldn't be more proud of you and wish you the best. Congratulations, graduates. You have achieved a major accomplishment. And I know I speak for everyone here at Purdue Global. We are so very proud of you. Best of luck in your next adventure. Boiler up. The following candidates are graduating from the School of Nursing. Kehinde Romok Amu Amosan. Grace Chickazee. Fedeline Pierre Luis. Faye Ascari. Teresa Bolden Donaldson. Tiffany Geiger. Dona Conte. Oh, Tiffany Geiger. Claire Gomez.
Kimberly Clark. Maureen Kassab. Li Ping Michane. Deanna Anderson. Ashmira Rajalni. Tolalupe Adugubemi. Albert Sabendal. Valencia Bailey McCray. D. Shaw Robinson. Sarah Hurley. Abby DeWitt. Mamandoma Mustafa. Chelsea Croats. Raylin Tanchango. Eleanor Ramondo. Congratulations to the School of Nursing graduates. <laughs> Dr. DeCourt. Will the candidates in the School of General Education please rise? <laughs> Chancellor Dooley, these graduates have successfully fulfilled the requirements of the School of General Education, and with the approval of the faculty, they are now being presented to you to be formally recognized for their degree. Well, thank you, Dr. DeCourt. Exercise the authority of the trustees of Purdue University Global, legally vested by the state of Indiana, and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I now confer upon each of you the bachelor's or associate's degree with all of the rights, privileges, duties, and responsibilities of that degree. And as evidence of this great achievement, you will now be formally recognized, and I invite the marshals to lead all candidates from the School of General Education to the stage. And as they make their way to the stage, let's we see what some of the folks from the School of General Education want to share with the grads. Congratulations, graduates. You did it. You're here. You have so much to be proud of. Congratulations again. Congratulations, graduates. And I'd like to send a special shout out to our military graduates on behalf of the Department of Professional Studies. Great work. Aapki mehnat rang lai hai. Aap jivan mein is nai mukam par pahunch gaye hain. Aapko meri hardik badhai, shandar safalta. Congratulations to you, our Purdue University Global graduates. You fought this hard to get to this part of your educational journey, and we're so very proud of you. We'll see you at the top because the bottom way too proud. Congratulations. The following candidates are graduating from the School of General Education. Derek Wheeler. Caitlin Vanneman. Keith Dawson. Bradford Carr, U.S. Army veteran.
Edward Benitez, Jr., U.S. Army. Congratulations to the School of General Education graduates. <laughs> Dr. Evans? Will the candidates in the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences please rise? Chancellor Dooley, these graduates have successfully fulfilled the requirements of the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. And with the approval of the faculty, they are now being presented to you to be formally recognized for their degree. Thank you, Dr. Evans. Exercise the authority of the trustees of Purdue University Global, legally vested by the people of the state of Indiana, and upon the recommendation of the faculty, and I'll confer upon each of you the master's, bachelor's, associate, or certificate with all the rights, privileges, duties, and responsibilities of that degree. As evidence of this great achievement, you'll now be formally recognized, and I invite the marshals to lead all the candidates from the College of the School, <laughs> the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences to the stage. Let's take a look at what some of our friends from the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences want to share with us. Congratulations, graduates. Job well done. Congratulations, graduates. You did it. You've worked so hard, you've overcome so many obstacles, and you've achieved your success. Congratulations again. Enjoy your wonderful day. Congratulations, graduates. We're honored to celebrate your graduation with you. Boiler up, folks. Congratulations, 2023 graduates. You have journeyed, and you have now reached your destination. Congratulations on your graduation, and best wishes for your future. Now go out and make a difference in this world. Boiler up. The following candidates are graduating from the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Stacy Acevedo. Cassandra Aguilar Barrias. Roxette Bissara. Alexandra Butrago. Ernestine Chase. Lacey Burt. Bailey Crawford. Aisha Collins. Ryan L. Davidson, U.S. Army. Ashley Cutberth. Mackenzie Dorval. Ana Garcia Romo. Amanda, Amanda Gonzalez. Jinjira Jayan. Michelle Cherie Jenkins. Shailaja Krish, Krishnaprasad. Bevan Mayarua.
Lindsay Masuda. Rahab Awada. Emily Ramsey. Ariel Ramirez. John Puckett. Brittany Prate. Rudolph Martinez II, United States Marine Veteran. Diane Pedroza. Gabrielle Kenner. Kara Joyce Lusada. Kamiko James. Sarai Jimenez Ramos. Vicky Galindo. Evis Harvey. Anna De Acosta. Izona Maria Cotton. Tiffany Kurtwright. Jamila Brazelton. Ashton Brittany Choma. Malia Burleson. Marisa Aparicio. Emma Burholz. Kishira McKnight, U.S. Army. Camilla Adams, U.S. Air Force. Stephanie Miller. Eileen Cabale, our, our vocalist earlier today. Nicole Olesnovich. Corey Nelson. <laughs> Ross Pounds. Shelby Price. Christian Rhodes. Bernadine Rampersad Paquette. Daisy Rivera. Brianne Raposo. Mary Seddon. Alexandra Robinson. She did it. <laughs> Stephanie Seuss. Conrad Sims. Jasmine Turner. Gabriella Wyrick. Joseph Vidal, U.S. Army. Carliana Allender. Oscar Augustine. Abraham Ayala Barajas. Venetris Batty. Lamont Redmond, U.S. Marines. Trevino. Vanessa Trevino. Nicole Newton. 
Kenya McClinton, U.S. Air Force veteran. Sabrina Mann. Christina King. Eva Green. Lucia Groner. Nathan Drozd. Wendy Ferrero. Tawana Craig. Isabel Diaz. Sierra Clark. Samantha Chatfield, U.S. Army. Paul Apollock, United States Coast Guard. Rachel Baga. Alex Wolf, U.S. Air Force. Anahi Alcantara Brego. Kelly Volkert. Tad Wickersham. Julie Vargo. Aisha Sutton. Matthew Trevino, U.S. Army veteran. Sherry Stewart. Jeremy Snyder. Jasmine Robertson. Crystal Ray. Michelle Cherry. Gladys Okori. Rachel Cotton. Juanita Dinkins. Megan Elias Beck. Veronica Guignard. Crystal Kong, U.S. Army veteran. Deja Hall, U.S. Army. Blair Martin. Braylon Miller. Bailey Limbaugh. Moriando Moore. Catherine Nixon, U.S. Army. Tia Ocampo. Rebecca Fennings. Adriana Rosario. Jennifer Schilling. Isidra Sabion, U.S. Army veteran. Shea. 
Victoria Sheehan. Michael Warren, U.S. Army veteran. Daniel Sparks. Sydney Zagorensky. Karen Whalen. Crystal Hayes. Maria Atkins. Oi Mibude. Shauna Finney. Lindsay Page. Christina Perkins Orr. Lavina Cabrera. Sanigua Mann. Christopher White. Von Sergio Webster, U.S. Army veteran. Brianna Velasquez, U.S. Marine veteran. Karen Thompson. Jennifer Triolo. Ahmed Taylor. Lynette Tur Galistanian. Cassandra Charlo, U.S. Army. Shania Smith. Madison Sainer. Natalie Rodriguez. <laughs> Katrina Robinson. Evian Pri. Sophia Nashbush. Brenda Patino Placencia. All right. Congratulations, let's give one more round of applause for all of our graduates. I'm going to give you a lot of credit. You guys know how to celebrate. Uh, although I did not hear any cowbells, but let's get all right. We're almost at the finish line. Family and friends, please remain seated and keep the aisles clear until the faculty and all of our graduates have exited the theater. Then you can find them outside after the ceremony. And now it's time for the ceremonial tassel turning. Candidates, please rise. Graduates, if you're participating from home, please put on your cap and tassel if you're not already wearing them. As the Chancellor of Purdue University Global, I now invite you to participate in the tradition that will signify your new status. Graduates, as you're now part of the graduating class of Purdue University Global, you may change your tassel to the left side of your mortarboard. All right? 